Uh, welcome to uh, April 21st. This is our uh, last meeting of this council. I want to thank you all for being here tonight. And we have a lot of special guests here with us. Uh, it is official now. Uh, John Marsh and Warren Crutch did tell me that snow is officially over now. So, uh, Before we call uh, tonight's meeting to order, I'd like to call on Councilman uh, Ken Hussey for a prayer. And then uh, please join me in the Pledge of Allegiance. Thank you, Mayor. Um, as we gather tonight at this council meeting, I ask that we be mindful of our opportunities to serve our fellow citizens in Jefferson City. Let us keep in mind always the values of this community, make sure we put forth our best efforts in those areas and upon those things which we can build with confidence. We are thankful for this day, its many blessings, its opportunities, and its challenges. May we appreciate and use each day that comes our way. Let us seek strength and guidance for all that comes at us each day for all its duties, its challenges, and its opportunities. May we be challenged to give our best always to our citizens and to our community, and let us all work together to strive to make Jefferson City a better city for all. Amen. Uh, roll call, please. Branch. Here. Bray. Graham. Here. Henry. Here. Hussey. Here. Mahalovich. Here. Prather. Here. Schulte. Here. Scrivener. Here. Turgeon. Here. Uh, we have a quorum. At this point in time, we'll entertain a motion to accept our uh, agenda. So moved. Yes, Second. Uh, moved and seconded. Discussion. Seeing none, all in favor, please say aye. aye. All opposed, same sign. Motion carries. Uh, next, we'll move into miscellaneous items. First, we have a proclamation. Uh, Ms. Trick, Trish Richter and Bill Farr. And whoever else you might have with you, if you could come up to the podium, please. Good to see you guys again. What we have here is a uh, proclamation uh, for the Elks. Whereas the Elks USA is of a return order with, a, with nearly a million members and a history of 141 years of service. Whereas the Jefferson City Elks Lodge 531 is one of over 2,000 lodges in the United States. Whereas the Elks is the nation's largest volunteer drug awareness program. Whereas the Elks National Drug Awareness Program strives to teach children and parents about the dangers of illegal drug use and prevent the abuse of legalized and prescription drugs. Now, therefore, I, Eric J. Strump, Mayor of Jefferson City, do hereby proclaim the week of the first week of May 2014 as, El as Elks National Youth Week. Congratulations. Thank you. Anything else you guys would like to add? Um, yeah, I'd like to thank you for the proclamation and the time to do that. Uh, I know you got a busy night tonight, so we'll keep it short. Uh, look around the room and in the gallery, we got several members here of our Elks Lodge, and it's not just about drug awareness that we're working on the first week of May. It's May 10th, by the way, so bring your kids out that day. It's going to be a fun-filled day. We got Jefferson City Fire Department, Police Department going to be involved, and lots of fun activities for the kids. But it's going to be informative for the parents as well. We're also working on uh, uh, safety for the kids as far as what to watch out for, uh, alcohol prevention, uh, bullying, which is a big thing right now. That's all things that we're modifying our drug awareness to uh, lean towards. So we encourage everybody in the gallery, members of the council, uh, spread the word for us May 10th. Come out to the Elks Lodge. We're uh, located right across the street from, uh, I think it's Jason uh, Firehouse 3. Uh, uh, right across from Oak Hills Golf Course. We're kind of down on the niche there a little bit. Uh, we're more than about drinking in pool. Uh, we're, uh, we're, we just have a great time down there, and we appreciate your time tonight. I could hit a golf ball one time in your pool. <laughs> yep. We still have it. It's up on the wall. <laughs> I'm sure it rolled a long way. Trish, would you have anything to add? 
after what he just said? Probably not, because I probably wouldn't get through without sneezing right now. <laughs> Well, thank you both for being here. We have this proclamation for you to take back. To Many of you know Trish from here. She's right. also, I've appointed her to be our youth activities chairperson this year, and she's also taken a tremendous responsibility this year, and it's crazy what she's done in, in two weeks. So I applaud her for her efforts. All right. Thank you both. How about a round of applause for the Elks and all they do for our community throughout the year. All right, next on our agenda this evening, uh, uh, Bob Black and Andrew Schmidt. Could you please come forward, please, to the podium? I've been on the, I've been coming to these meetings for a long time. It's the first time I remember this one, but I'm glad to see that we're doing it. Um, this is a proclamation about kites, correct? Yes. I just want to make sure I didn't have the wrong one. Whereas kite flying is family friendly, non polluting, healthy, educational, fun, and an outdoor activity. Whereas kites have made significant contributions to the arts, science, mathematics, cultural awareness, and history. And whereas the National Kite Month event will be held on April 26th at the Jefferson City JC's Fairgrounds, we encourage everyone to participate and enjoy the excitement of flying a kite. Now, therefore, I, Eric J. Strump, Mayor of Jefferson City and the State of Missouri, do hereby proclaim April as National Kite Month. Gentlemen, can you tell us how this got started? Uh, Brother Black had been part of a community kite fly before and thought this would be a great opportunity to get families invited and be an opportunity as a community event. And our church wanted to support that. And, wh and what church is it? Uh, Central Baptist Church. Okay, well, great. Any questions for our guest? All right, let's give them a round of applause. Thank you for what you do. All right, last but not least, uh, Mr. Bill Lockwood. Uh, this is about uh, Arbor Day and trees. Whereas the trees in our city create a urban forest, a pleasant and helpful environment for man by providing healthy energy savings, better air quality, spiritual substance, and are living symbols of hope for a bright future and for, for both young and old. Whereas Jefferson City is fortunate in its natural endowment of trees in our parks along our streets and has an ongoing program to replenish the and nourish the trees within our community whereas Amron Missouri has provided a monetary gift to replenish trees within our community uh, by removing by moving through tree line USA program whereas the city of Jefferson Parks and Recreation Department and forestry is responsible for the urban forest program in Jefferson City and has obtained and maintained the standards of tree care necessary for Jefferson City to remain a Tree City USA for the 16th consecutive year. Now, therefore, I, Eric J. Strump, Mayor of Jefferson City, do hereby proclaim April 26th as Arbor Day. Bill, what would you like to add, please? Thank you, Mayor. Just uh, again, I want to thank uh, our partners. We're very proud of the accomplishment of being a Tree City USA for 16 years. Thank uh, Amron for supplying the trees and I want to thank uh, Councilman Hussey and all the people who are going to be involved with Serve uh, Jeff City coming up this Saturday at Memorial Park, uh, one of the many, many locations. We will be having our Arbor Day ceremony at that location and uh, the proclamation and Arbor Day ceremony are, are part of the requirements to uh, retain Tree City USA status and we thank you for that. How many trees will you guys be planting, Councilman Hussey? I'm not sure if we know a count uh, for this year, uh, probably 20 or so at least. And, and Bill, I know you mentioned this from time to time, but you can also do a memorial for a tree, is that correct? Right, through our Parks and Recreation Foundation, we have a very active uh, memorial tree and commemorative tree program that uh, individuals can take advantage of. It's been a source of supplying uh, 
many hundreds of trees for our park system at at uh, no cost to the taxpayers. As you know, Bill, recently we won the most uh, beautiful small town in America, and I think uh, your park system, uh, the good guys and, and women in the forestry division, please pass on our best. Uh, I think without a lot of the work that you guys do, especially with our trees, uh, would be very hard to get that honor. So very good job, and thank you. Thank you very much. Okay, next uh, under D, would like to uh, call on our police chief, Mr. Roger Schrader. Uh, Roger has some new uh, police department hires he'd like to tell us about. Roger. Uh, thank you, Mr. Mayor, and I am very pleased tonight to introduce to um, the city council seven new members of the police department, and I'd ask them to rise. Um, I will introduce them as you uh, look at them left to right, your left to right. Uh, the first is communications operator Lori Nichols. Lori is from California, Missouri. Uh, she was employed as a corrections officer with the Missouri Department of Corrections for three years. Uh, she was most recently employed as a communications operator with Morgan County 911 Center, and she's mule certified, which is basically the uh, records management system within the state of Missouri. So we're pleased to have Lori. Uh, next is Shelby Kerr. Shelby is from Russellville. Uh, she attended State Fair Community College and Central Methodist College. Uh, she was previously employed by Rehab Specialty Medical as a special needs program assistant. Um, Shelby's dad has worked for the uh, Department of Justice for many years locally, so in a sense she's a legacy. Uh, both Lori and Shelby began employment last Monday. Uh, police officers. First is Ben Hempelman. Uh, ben attended Owensville High School. He earned a Bachelor of Science degree in Criminal Justice and Psychology from Missouri Valley College. Um, ben was previously employed with the Missouri Department of Corrections as a corrections officer. He will attend the Law Enforcement Training Institute at the University of Missouri commencing May 5, 2014. Um, as an aside, Ben was an all-conference linebacker, which when we play the fire department is important to us, so <laughs> we just want to give them fair warning. Uh, uh, in the middle, is Aldo Rubio. Uh, let's see, he attended high school in Reno, Nevada. He was a member of the United States Marine Corps for four years, attained the rank of corporal before he was honorably discharged in November of 2013. And he also will attend the Law Enforcement Training Institute at the University of Missouri beginning May 5th. Uh, it's important to us too to, uh, to note that um, Mr. Rubio speaks fluent Spanish, so it's not often that we're able to get a bilingual officer, so we're very happy in that regard. And he is also a legacy. I believe his father and grandfather were police officers in Mexico. Is that correct? Thank you. Uh, next is Jacob Snockenberg. Jake attended high school in Coke Camp, Missouri, attended State Fair Community College and Ozark Technical Community College. He graduated from LETI again at the University of Missouri in 2008. He was a member of the United States Army, um, honorably discharged at a Specialist E-4. He was previously employed for six years as a police officer with the city of Osage Beach. Uh, next, um, uh, Officer Jeff Skinner graduated from Hickman High School. He obtained a Bachelor of Arts degree in Criminal Justice from Columbia College. He graduated from LETI in 2003. He was most recently employed for six years as a police corporal with the city of Lake Ozark. And finally, John Lehman attended Jeff City High School, received a Bachelor of Science degree in Criminal Justice from Central Methodist University. Uh, previously employed with Lewis Irrigation and Landscaping, he is the third person that will be attending LETI at the university uh, commencing May 5th. And he also played wide receiver uh, in college. So again, important to us. So um, with that, and I think our officers, uh, the two individuals, uh, Jake and Jeff, uh, who are licensed police officers, will begin May 5th, correct? And then the other three that are attending will begin employment next Monday. They'll have a week of orientation and then off to the academy at the university. So very pleased to have them. Thank you. Thank you, Chief. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, on behalf of the city, welcome. Uh, as the mayor and the council will be the first to tell you, um, our city is so proud of our public safety teams of uh, police and fire 
and uh, our ambulance service, uh, everything that makes our city uh, as safe as it can be, you are obviously a part of that or will be a part of that uh, from here on out. On behalf of everyone, welcome to Jefferson City. If there's anything any of us could do, please let us know. Thank you very much. All right, next under number five, we have a uh, hearing tonight that's pending a PUD. We'll let uh, Janice McMillan tell us more about that in just a second. But first, I'll ask the clerk to please read uh, third reading of Bill 2013 154. An ordinance of the city of Jefferson, Missouri, approving a preliminary PUD plan amendment for property located at 3507 Amazonas Drive described as part of the southwest quarter of the southeast quarter of section 4, Township 44 North, Range 12 West, Jefferson City, Cole County, Missouri. Janice. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. This application is for an addition on to an existing building. The building addition consists of 23,000 square feet. It's for the YMCA West that's located on Amazonas Drive. The addition would include locker rooms, uh, fitness room, and site improvements are fairly minimal, but they are going to formalize some parking along the former Alameda Drive, which was vacated by the city in 2012. Planning and Zoning Commission reviewed this application at their meeting on March 13th and recommended that it be approved. We've received no comments from the public to date. Any other questions of Ms. McMillan on 2013 154? Seeing none, uh, Council, first of all, we have to have hearing, correct? A hearing? Okay, at this point in time, we'll open the hearing uh, for anyone that might be in favor of uh, 154. Let's hear to speak. Anyone at all? Okay, at this point in time, we'll close the, that portion and we'll hear from anyone who may be opposed to 154. Seeing none at this point in time, that public hearing on 154 is now officially closed. We'll go back to debate by council members. Ken. Mr. Mayor, I'll just publicly announce I'll recuse myself from this vote since the YMCA is my employer. All right. Thank you, Ken. Um, anyone else? Any other debate on 154? Seeing none, roll call, please. Branch. Aye. Bray. Graham? Aye. Henry? Aye. Hussey? Abstain. Mihalovich? Aye. Prather? Aye. Schulte? Aye. Scrivener? Aye. Turgeon? Aye. And motion passes. Next we'll have a third reading of Bill 2013-155. An ordinance of the City of Jefferson, Missouri approving a preliminary PUD plan for property located at 3327 American Drive described as part of the northeast quarter of the southeast quarter of section 9 township 44 north range 12 west jefferson city cole county missouri all right miss mcmillan thank you mr mayor this plan uh, is also located in a planned district on american avenue the owner is the missouri bar association office of chief disciplinary council this applicant proposes to construct a new building on American Avenue. They currently are in the existing office building at 3335 American. This new building will be located adjacent to that at 3327 American Avenue. The Planning and Zoning Commission reviewed this application at their meeting in, on uh, March 13th and recommended it be approved. I'd be happy to answer any questions. Okay, uh, at this point in time, we'll open up the hearing on 2013-155. Uh, uh, anyone here to speak for that particular project? Anyone to speak against that project? Okay, at this, that will officially close the public portion of the hearing. At this point in time, debate or questions to staff uh, by council members? Seeing none, roll call, please. Graham? Aye. Henry? Aye. Hussey? Aye. 
Mahalovich. Aye. Prather. Aye. Schulte. Aye. Scrivener. Aye. Turgeon. Aye. Branch. Aye. Okay, that uh, takes care of that, and that does pass. Motion passes. Uh, next, we'll go into minutes reports filed here at City Hall. Uh, you can read those uh, here online. We have Transportation and Traffic Commission, Planning and Zoning Commission, Historic Preservation Commission, Campo Technical Committee, Environmental Quality Com Control Commission, and a certification of our April 8th election. Uh, if you would like to be on one of our commissions or boards, you can do so by contacting uh, Gail Strope or you can go to our website, which is jeffcitymo.org. At this point in time, uh, committee reports, I think we decided we're doing those at the second meeting. Is that correct? Yes, sir. Mayor, you, I know we discussed that, but we might want to go ahead and do them now since uh, Councilman Turgeon. I was, I was, I was just going to mention that. I know that council, council, this, is, this is Carrie's last meeting tonight. Uh, Carrie, do you have a report for administration? Well, administration committee, I guess it'll be up to the new council to decide who's going to be on that committee. I've, I would like to say thank you for, uh, to the council for allowing me to chair that committee. I've enjoyed it. And Gail was our uh, staff liaison for many years that I served on there and enjoyed that quite a bit. And now Drew has taken that on. So I would just say thank you for allowing me to participate because administration saw all kinds of basically a little bit of everything came to that committee and I really uh, enjoyed that but typically we meet on the first Wednesday but I guess it'll be up to the new council thank you all right thank you Carrie uh, anyone else now we're gonna go to the second meeting I'm assuming all right uh, no appointments uh, by myself tonight uh, presentations from staff a uh, consultants and invited guest we have mr. Lockwood back again recognizing one of our parks and recreation staff members As I'm sure you all are aware, we have many outstanding employees in all departments of the city, and uh, sometimes you're not aware of all their good works that go on behind the scenes. Uh, they're busy folks, and tonight I uh, wanted to present to you uh, Angie Tobin, who received uh, our Professional Association's second highest award at a, at a recent meeting. Angie Tobin has been with the Jefferson City Parks and Recreation Department since 1997. She started as a customer service representative and then was administrative assistant for the department before being promoted to recreation program supervisor in August 1999. Angie's current responsibilities include organizing youth and adult volleyball, youth football, t-ball and coach pitch, high school hoops, the local Hershey track and field meet, local and sectional pitch hit and run competitions, the candy cane hunt, and operating ball field concessions. In addition to these recreational program duties, she's also responsible for the publication of the biannual program guide, website development and maintenance, and other social media. She has also been instrumental and one of the main leaders in establishing the Jefferson City Friends of the Park Did You Know campaign, including a monthly e-newsletter. Angie does her job with enthusiasm and is always willing to do more. Listening to the citizens and providing them with services and programs they ask for is not unusual for Angie. Although it means more work for her, she is always willing to try new programs. Over the years, Angie has taken the initiative to start several new programs, including youth volleyball, which continues to grow each year, youth sports day camp, the Candy Cane Hunt, which was recognized and awarded the MPRA Musco Give Back Award in 2009, the Start Smart programs, baseball, soccer, basketball, football and golf, and NFL flag football for kindergarten through fourth grade. Most recently, Angie heard about pickleball. After doing some research and attending a couple different presentations on the sport, she is now in the process of starting that program in Jefferson City. As we all know, Dealing with patrons can be trying at times, but Angie has developed a good rapport with the parents, coaches, and youth in the community. Besides dealing with parents and coaches, Angie is faced with the challenge of finding facilities for all of her indoor programs. Without indoor facilities of her own, Angie has to work closely with the local schools and churches to get gym space whenever it is available working around everyone else's schedules. Angie is dedicated and passionate about MPRA and Parks and Recreation. 
She has been active in MPRA, serving as a board member at large from 2009 to 2011. She was elected the sports section's first president-elect in 2010, and then served as the sports section president in 2011 and 2012. She is currently the professional certification board chair and has been the Region 2 education chair since 2010. She hosted two successful Glow Golf tournaments, providing funds for the sports section, has presented sessions at MPRA conferences on many different sports topics, has served as conference social chair, and has helped plan and organize several Region 2 mini conferences. She was the NFL Punt, Pass and Kick Regional Coordinator and is currently the Pitch, Hit and Run Regional Coordinator. And she has also received the Outstanding Local Hershey Coordinator Award in 2001. She's also been active in the National Alliance for Youth Sports, serving on their task force for several years. In addition to these accolades, Angie received the City of Jefferson Outstanding Service Award in 2008. Never satisfied with the normal position requirements, Angie has successfully attained and maintained certification as a certified Parks and Recreation Professional, a certified Youth Sports Administrator through the National Alliance for Youth Sports, a certified NYSCA Clinician, and a CPR AED First Aid Instructor through the American Red Cross. And Angie does all this while raising a very active family of four, ranging in age from 6 to 18. I uh, want to represent to Angie the award that she did receive. That wore me out just listening to it. <laughs> so uh, you know, she's very busy. Uh, she's really a, a great staff member. We're proud to have her on our team. And I think she helped us all do a better job. Just wanted to say thank you very much. Um, I was so shocked by this award at MPRA that I was actually speechless for once. So anyone that knows me knows that it, that's very rare for me. So um, it is really crazy to um, deal with sports, but it's also so much fun and rewarding because you know how many people can say they put smiles on kids' faces all the time, and uh, not only my kids' faces but other kids' faces. So thank you guys very much. I get to meet a lot of people in the community. I get to deal with a lot of different departments. I even have several people coach for me. Um, that that uh, kind of been in this room or helped do that kind of stuff so thank you Angie thank you for everything you do for our community but I thought it was kind of odd uh, he said you have children ages six to eight how old is Steve 18. or s 18 how old is Steve <laughs> <laughs> thank you very much <laughs> I know I'm sure you, I'm sure you will uh, congratulations to Bill a lot of a lot of uh, awards and accolades to uh, Parks and Rec tonight, and very well deserved, especially as we uh, come into spring or, or uh, maybe just have a little touch of summer here as, as time moves forward. Uh, next, we'll have an, um, an announcements by the council staff and mayor, and next we have Ms. Uh, Janice McMillan again. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, we just have <coughs> one more week before the citywide residential large bulky item pickup begins on the west side of town uh, it begins Monday April 28th so everyone can have their um, items that they want to have picked up furniture large bulky items um, also tied bundles of scrap material under four feet will be taken and mattresses hard to believe but that's the case uh, we will not pick up uh, boxes of uh, debris trash or garbage that would fit in the cart and the ordinary trash pickup day uh, that will still be uh, still occur as as usual according to the schedule so that begins Monday April 28th on the west side of town and the following week it will start on the east side of town on Monday May 5th if anyone has any questions feel free to call 634-6410 thank you Okay, any questions for uh, Ms. McMillan on that? Bob? Just a quick comment. I, I guess people are uh, looking forward to it because I'm already starting <laughs> to see trash on the curbside. Uh, yes. I don't know if people are hoping that someone will come along and go ahead and go through it and <laughs> haul some of it off now or what, but uh, I've, I've seen things out for several days already. Lots of treasures are out there already. <laughs> lots of treasures to be had. 
All right. Thank you, uh, Janice, for all you do in that department. Uh, next, uh, you're going to tell us about the Heritage Week celebration. Yes. On uh, May 20th at 4 p.m., the Historic Preservation Commission and the um, Historic City of Jefferson will host the Heritage Week celebration. And there's three awards that are part of that celebration. The Landmark Awards will be uh, bestowed upon their uh, designees. And the Gregory Stockard Distinguished Service Award will be presented to two, two individuals. Um, Nick Monaco and Michelle Brooks are those two service award recipients this year. <clears throat> and also the uh, Historic City of Jefferson will award um, and recognize participants in the Heritage Essay, uh, Heritage Multimedia, and Heritage Art competitions. And those are through the middle school and high schools in uh, the Jefferson City. So those award winners will be presented as well. We'd like to invite you all to attend May 20th at 4 p.m. Our mayor will be uh, in attendance to uh, present the awards. Right. Any questions on uh, Heritage Week? Okay, thank you, Janice. Thank you. Uh, anything on uh, presentations from the gallery? I don't think we had anyone sign up, correct, clerk, right. on this meeting? Uh, at this point in time, uh, entertain a motion to take up the consent agenda. So moved. Second. Uh, moved by Henry, seconded by Mr. Branch. Uh, discussion? Seeing none, roll call, please. Branch? Aye. Graham? Aye. Henry? Aye. Hussey? Aye. Mihalovich? Aye. Prather? Aye. Schulte? Aye. Scrivener? Aye. Turgid? Aye. Uh, motion passes. Next we'll have, we'll go into bills pending, and this is our last bills of this uh, particular council. Uh, I'll ask the clerk to have third reading of Bill 2013-152. An ordinance of the City of Jefferson, Missouri, amending Section 19401, Motor Vehicles and Traffic, Schedule J, Parking Prohibited, Subparagraph A of the Code of the City of Jefferson, pertaining to a portion of West McCarty Street. Mr. Marash. <clears throat> Thank you, Mr. Mayor. The, the bill will add a no parking zone around a small island in uh, 1300 block of West McCarty Street. The uh, request came from the neighborhood and the Transportation and Traffic Commission recommended to the council approval. Okay, any uh, questions by the council? Any debate? Seeing none, roll call please. Henry. Aye. Hussey? Aye. Mihalovich? Aye. Prather? Aye. Schulte? Aye. Scrivener? Aye. Turgeon? Aye. Branch? Aye. Graham? Aye. Motion passes. Next, I'll ask the clerk to have third reading of 2013-153. An ordinance of the City of Jefferson, Missouri, amending the Personnel Policy Manual regarding Article 6, Introductory and Training Periods. Uh, Chief or Gail, or both? Thank you, Mr. Mayor. All right. um, <clears throat> Chief Schrader. If I might have one extra minute, uh, I'm not sure we always give feedback to the council, but um, I believe we were here in November and I introduced five new hires then, five police officers, uh, two of whom um, attended uh, the Law Enforcement Training Academy at the University of Missouri. And uh, the there aren't very many awards that are given in these classes and usually the classes have between 25 and 30 recruits and I wanted to tell the council and mayor that um, we sent Lucas Vogel and he was number one in firearms in that class and Kelly Get Gettler was second academically and was chosen by the instructors of the Academy as the number one recruit in that class so we're proud of that and I will say too that that is not unusual that typically uh, those people that we send to the Academy um, receive those types of awards and um, I don't always pass that along and I'm remiss in doing that so I wanted to uh, tell the council that once again our two recruits did exceptionally well this um, bill 153 really I brought kind of a show-and-tell tonight uh, if we want to look at it that way uh, what it does is 
uh, we have a probationary period of one year for all police employees. What this will do is change that so that if a newly em employed person has already attended an academy, is licensed in the state of Missouri, their introductory period begins immediately upon their commission, which is the first week of employment. If, however, they are required to go to the academy, their introductory period begins upon their successful graduation from that academy. They are then commissioned and their one an additional year then follows that commission. So tonight we had three um, that must attend the academy. So when they return to us, they will have an additional 12 months of probationary period uh, for the two that are, are already licensed. Their probationary period will begin the first week of employment and extend for 12 months. And I don't know of a more a clearer way to explain it, but that's what this ordinance does. Uh, we feel it provides us an equal opportunity to assess those new people, uh, excluding the academy. We don't count the academy against that probationary period. So, be happy to answer questions. Any questions of uh, council members for uh, Chief Schrader tonight? Councilman Scrivener. Chief, good explanation. I appreciate it. Uh, what I would ask though is what's the difference between the probationary period and the year of employment after that in terms of status uh, termination uh, that sort of thing what 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 is the significance of the pro probationary period well it probably requires somewhat of a law explanation also I mean we're at will but um, the application of it is during that period of time we're constantly assessing that individual regardless of assignment and can terminate that person without showing cause basically uh, once they are released from that period uh, formally then we show cause before we would terminate to be subject to review by the police board or something like that all of those in, things in yes sir yes, but sir. during probationary period I assume that wouldn't be the case they don't have the right to appeal okay all right thank you any other questions for Chief on uh, 153? Yes, sir, Mr. Graham. And I guess, uh, Chief, in that same uh, uh, concern, um, in the past few years, have we lost uh, any uh, officers or in that past pro probationary period in the past? We do. Uh, sometimes they elect to, uh, to move on. I mean, we, we actually try to paint a, real, a very realistic picture of what the job is all about so that they're not surprised but every now and then someone will uh, spend a few months um, in the either the field training program or out on their own and uh, simply say it's not for me that is rare but it does happen and then we also have terminated um, individuals during that period that is also rare but it does happen it does happen okay thank you any other questions for chief on 153 uh, council debate. Seeing none, roll call, please. Hussey? Aye. Mihalovich? Aye. Prather? Aye. Schulte? Aye. Scrivener? Aye. Turgeon? Aye. Branch? Aye. Graham? Aye. Henry? Aye. Motion passes. Next, we'll have third reading of 156, which, for the record, will be our last bill of this year. An ordinance of the City of Jefferson, Missouri, accepting right-of-way from the Missouri Department of Transportation. Mr. Marash. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. The uh, clerk indicated uh, this bill will allow us to accept 0 0.07 acres of right-of-way from MoDOT. Uh, it's in the area of the, this uh, project we have called the Clay Street Pike Plaza project. The, uh, the bids for that actual project will be awarded in the next couple of months. Uh, by the council and staff recommends approval. All right, any questions for Matt on uh, 156? Seeing none, discussion? Seeing none, roll call please. Mihalovich? Aye. Prather? Aye. Schulte? Aye. Scrivener? Aye. Turgeon? Aye. Branch? Aye. Graham? Aye. Henry? Aye. Hussey? Aye. Okay, nothing on the informal calendar this evening. No resolutions in our first meeting, presentations. Uh, uh, no one has signed up for that. Uh, number 17, council and staff discussion or presentation topics. 
Seeing none, at this point in time, uh, any new business to bring before the council this evening? Seeing none, at this time we have unfinished business. A presentation tonight to be made to our outgoing uh, councilwoman, Ms. Carrie Turgeon. It has been the uh, a tradition that Mayor Landwehr had started. Um, Phyllis, how many years ago? Did you do it the whole time? Or just the whole time, yeah. whole time. Uh, anytime a, a council member leaves, uh, John always had a, a, a good way, I think, to try to describe them in uh, one word. And I've done that this evening for Ms. Turgeon. The word, Carrie, is passionate. Carrie Turgeon has served our city and our council for six years. When Carrie took on a project, she was always, always passionate about it. Here are some examples. Our smoking band our citywide trash and curb recycling program, doing all she could with the Missouri State Penitentiary, protecting and promoting our downtown, and of course, her work on our conference center. Carrie has served as the liaison to the CVB, has worked with the Cultural Arts Commission uh, since the beginning, is that correct, Carrie? and also has been the chair of our admin committee for some time along with many other committees. Her compassion for serving our city and the fourth ward has been appreciated and tonight we gather here to say thank you Carrie for your service to our city and we wish you well in your future endeavors. And as, the, uh, as we also have uh, I'm honored tonight to give you a key to the city. Uh, it says in uh, recreation or in recognition of outstanding service to the people of Jefferson City, April 2008 to April 2014. Thank you very much, ma'am. Thank you. I'll give you this. While we're on that topic, anyone else uh, comments? Rick. Well, I took the lead of the one word, and my word was slightly different. It was uh, tenacious, <laughs> uh, which is perseverance, not giving up easily, tending to keep a firm hold on something. And I think you have shown uh, for your representation of your constituents that you listened and you dealt with them in, uh, in a consistent and efficient manner. and. Uh, I think you can be proud of your service on this council, and we're certainly proud to have you serve our city in the way you have over the years. Thank you. Thank you, Rick. All right, next. Ken. I, I don't have much to say because I just appreciate you, Carrie. Um, you know, there's a few of us that got on this council a year ago that you were a friend to and very supportive um, and have been encouraging, I think, for many years to get involved. So, you know, thank you. Thank you, Carlos. As your fourth ward counterpart, uh, certainly I'm going to miss you. Um, we would get emails uh, late at night, early in the morning. Uh, before I could respond, I thought I was going to be the first one to respond. You'd already responded uh, back to the constituents. Uh, I tried to find one word to describe you, uh, and the word dedicated uh, came across me. And certainly I'm going to miss you, but I uh, understand that I will be giving you phone calls most definitely and uh, it was a pleasure serving this one year with you uh, and uh, I wish you uh, the best in whatever you decide to do next thank you thank you Carlos Rick Gary uh, my word was going to be enthusiasm which is pretty close to passion and, and uh, uh, some of those areas that the, the mayor had mentioned uh, we're truly going to miss your leadership on those areas and I hope that uh, as, a, as, a, as a council are able to pick up somewhere but it's going to be hard we really appreciate you. Thank you. Thank you, Rick. Mr. Schulte. Carrie, all the words uh, spoken tonight are certainly representative, and, and thank you for your years of service and, and uh, for your leadership on the council. You will be missed. So thank you. 
Thank you, Sean. Mr. Henry. Thank you. Um, all the one words have actually already been taken. Uh, but uh, I just want to say, Carrie, it's been an honor and a pleasure um, serving on the council with you for the last uh, two years that I've been on the council. Um, I've learned a lot from you um, and your passion and your dedication to, uh, to Jefferson City. Uh, I just work right up the street from you, so I'll be coming to bug you um, uh, often. And, and uh, good luck with uh, whatever you plan to do here in the future. Thank you, Larry. All right. And Councilman Scrivener. Well, Carrie, I thought of all of those words, and, and usually uh, when, uh, when I'm asked to describe you, I usually think of passion, but I guess the word that I hope will apply, uh, and, and certainly I think has applied over the last six years, is friend. I, I hope that uh, you and I will always be friends. I think we have been friends in the last six years, and I think I've really enjoyed uh, the challenge that, that you brought to me. Uh, I think you forced me to think more about the positions that I took. Uh, I think you made uh, convincing arguments many times uh, whenever we did disagree, but amazingly we agreed a lot, probably a lot more than we disagreed. And uh, so I've really enjoyed the time that we spent together and, and, uh, and I'm looking forward uh, uh, to uh, our friendship in the future. Thank you, Bob. And Carrie. Well, wow, thank you. Um, well, I appreciate all those comments. That is so kind, every single one of you. Thank you so much. I appreciate that. Um, I have a lot to say after six years sitting in this seat, so I'm sure that's not a surprise. <laughs> but I do want to thank uh, the voters of the Fourth Ward for allowing me to serve. Um, I also want to thank my staff and my customers at Carrie's Hallmark Shop for the last six years. I haven't been there as much as I could have and should have been, but I do have a great staff and they have allowed me to be here. Uh, we're open until eight o'clock every night and how many late meetings that I'm here and haven't been um, tending to my business, but uh, they have allowed me to be here. Uh, and to my very supportive family, I want to thank my mom and dad, Jim and Irene Turgeon. Hi, mom. <laughs> Uh, and to my sister and brother, Helen and George. They've all been just super supportive all these years uh, on the council. And to thank my grandparents, George and Ornia, Papu and Yaya. They were never around any of the years that I served, but I know that they would have been so proud to know that I'm sitting in this seat. And I learned so much from my grandfather, an immigrant from Greece who came to this country and really taught me the pride he had in Jefferson City. And he would always say when he saw that capital, he knew this is where he was going to stay. And he did. And he loved Jefferson City. He loved America. He loved our democracy. He talked about it often. He wrote letters to the presidents of the United States and said what he had to say. And I just feel like I inherited that gene from him of just wanting to be involved and talking to the leaders and making a difference in any way that you can. And I, I uh, remember Papu sitting up here and, and too how he taught me to vote and he never missed an election. He lived to be in his 90s and he voted when my dad had to take him to vote he voted no matter what and I learned that and I hope we can all uh, teach the next generation how important it is to have that voice so that's how I got here but I want to take a second to show some respect for those who came before me in this seat in the fourth ward one of our first women councilwoman um, Carol McDowell was a fourth ward councilwoman and uh, I'm sure that she and I will not be the last to sit in here in the fourth ward. Um, also, um, Cindy Layton was another fourth ward representative when I came on. So I, I learned from those who came here before me, uh, two women. And then also I want to say uh, Clyde Angle sat in this very seat, and he's no longer with us. But I learned from him what it meant for me to come to that podium and gain the respect. And he always asked, you know, how's your family? Thank you for coming. Thank you for you know, being here and using your voice, whatever the topic was, because I was here a lot. And uh, the respect that I learned from, from him as well. Um, so when I was elected in 2008, Cindy and I were the two fourth ward reps. And I also served with Councilman Jane Smith. And she's the one who talked me into running for this council seat for the first time. She talked me into putting my name on the ballot. And Jane now lives in Washington, D.C., but I do have fond memories of, of her and, and really everybody that I've served with over the years. So many the council people that have come and gone, um, and former Mayor John Landwehr, and he truly led this city with class. 
and fairness. So uh, I'm just thankful that I had a chance to work with um, such a, a wonderful mayor. And I've served on many commissions. I enjoyed serving on Historic Preservation, uh, the Convention and Visitors Bureau, along with Steve Picker, and now the new leader, Diane Gillespie, Cultural Arts. I've served on all four standing committees. And I would encourage everybody, when you get a chance, make sure you serve on all four. Don't just stay on the same one, because each of the four has such unique characteristics. And we need to learn all the ways that we um, can in the city. So please alternate. Um, and I do take pride in a lot that's happened over the last six years. A lot of progress has happened. Uh, the single stream recycling, that was a council approved effort. It took a lot of work after we had such an outdated contract to get this new one together. And now we're already going to be talking about the next one. Um, and the voters actually ended up approving that even after the council did and a kind of a small group decided no that's not what we want well guess what the voters did want it and it just validated what this community wanted and that the council had made the right decision uh, and even though it was a little bit more forward thinking at the time uh, what we offered was a huge convenient service for a very reasonable and below average in the state of missouri price for that service and the clean indoor air ordinance. Uh, I'm proud of that, even though the council did not pass that, had nothing to do with the council. It wasn't a council led effort. All we did was place the effort on the ballot. It came from the voters, the initiative petition process, the signatures of the people of our community who wanted it, and it passed on the ballot. So I'm thankful and proud that that happened. Uh, one of my favorite nights was when the students came here and wanted to get our endorsement for uh, a resolution to get our state capitol building to follow our ordinance and become smoke free. And I, I love to see that next generation get involved in making a difference as well. A uh, few things that were um, some of the toughest things that came up while I was on council is when former city administrator Steve Rasmussen was fired. And he wasn't fired ultimately. I mean, he was fired ultimately. But in the beginning, that's not what that sitting council wanted to do. And even though I thought it was important that he be fired, um, that was a, a tough decision because there were very few of us that felt that way at the time. Uh, a couple of those votes were nine to one and eight to two, and often I was that one. And times it made me feel like I was on an island, but at the same time, that's ultimately what happened. He was ultimately fired. But what I was proud of was at that moment when we had that council meeting, and the council wanted to close the meeting. We're going to go into closed session. We're going to discuss this. And they would not close the meeting because they thought, well, if we don't go into closed session, we won't talk about that issue. And I said, fine, keep the meeting open. We will talk about this in open session. And I had no fear having our former administrator sitting right here at the table in front of everybody to the internet and the world to say, our community has lost confidence in him. And although it was, I was clearly a minority on that decision, it eventually came to be but I was proud to say everything in open session I think that's how I've always been I've never been afraid to speak my mind or speak my voice and the voters and constituents of the fourth ward have trusted in me they've come to me in many ways and and given me their thoughts and feedback and I've never been afraid to convey that whether I could build consensus on the council or not if I felt it was right I I never shied away from that uh, especially in open session um, and on that note too, uh, another one to nine vote that I was on the other end actually one to eight there was a councilman not there but when we brought Nathan Nicholas on board as our city administrator and at the time I thought he needs to go through the, the selection process our city does and although that's not what the council wanted um, Nathan and I got along great he knew I was the only one who objected to the way that that he was hired but I do object to the way he was fired and the fact that he was fired in a routine evaluation after serving many years, I believe 10 years, as um, a staff person at our city. Uh, I, and I, I just didn't like how that happened. I thought that was sort of uh, disrespectful. And, and he really did a lot of good for the community. Uh, so I just wanted to say a couple things that were, uh, I guess, difficult that, I, that we worked through um, that maybe could have happened better. Um, and Nathan fought hard for city employees. Uh, he was kind of there, he, he rallied for them. And in our last budget, when we didn't pass a raise, not even a raise uh, for cost of living, nothing, not even half percent, not even anything. And Nathan said, what are some other creative options? I know that didn't pass, but I think what disappoints me is I haven't seen the effort to uh, bring forward any discussion or ideas. And, and it probably has been. I'm going to guess maybe at a committee meeting that I've missed, I'm sure that that is being brought forward. But I haven't seen anything um, 
any ideas actively being looked at because it is important I don't want to see us get to the next budget and just repeat what we've done because that's really a step backwards if we're not supporting our employees and I believe at the time it was said well we as a council we're not going to let this just stop we're going to look at what can be done for our employees I haven't seen it but I'm sure it's happening because for me to sit here and say to our police fire and public works that we haven't given it all we can to make sure that whether it's a raise whether it was a floating holiday whatever it may be to give every effort to say we as a council uh, and appreciate every city employee uh, that's what I went through and so that was a big struggle that that um, nothing was able to come of that for the first time in many years so um, but speaking of employees I absolutely could not do my job as a council person without them um, I have to name a few specific. Phyllis is the backbone of this uh, city. She sits there and nobody hardly knows all the work she does, but she totally keeps us straight and keeps us going. So Phyllis really keeps us on track. Um, Britt in parking division and Buck and all of, all of his staff, uh, I'm constantly emailing and calling about different things with parking and they have a super division. Uh, Janice and code enforcement, I'll miss calling you about St. Mary's Boulevard and just the countless other code issues that you were always right on and helped me. And some we could solve and some were more difficult, but you were always right there to offer me advice and suggestions. And I could text you no matter what time of the day or night and know that you would take it seriously. And um, I really appreciate your dedication. Uh, people like Lauren Hershey, who took on new positions within the city, uh, this whole... Um, the household hazardous waste and other issues that are that are new to the city she's really taken on um, bill lockwood and everybody in parks i mean last week i met with you about a rugby league i mean random things that constituents have you would have no idea all the calls for every single department matt our street issues on edgewood i know carlos and i standing in the street with constituents with you saying what can we do to make this better what kind of improvements can we make uh, drew as interim city administrator and your staff jeremy um, Drew, you were so responsive. When you took on the full-time uh, city, uh, city attorney position, I was so pleased that you did that. Um, probably the most responsive staff person that I've dealt with. It's just an incredible that you were always on top of everything. And then when we gave you that extra workload of being interim, you just took it and you, you always remained uh, pleasant and happy and calm and it amazed me and on top of it you would do fun things like the city dunking booth which councilman Mahalovich and I dunked each other but the fact that you tried to make it fun for the employees on top of, of all the work that you did and uh, I really enjoyed working with you and then people like um, Ellen and the front desk crew you walk in that door they're smiling they're happy to see you uh, Gail I know you're in human resources and you've done a good job of, of really um, doing what you do with the employees and placing them in the right positions and I guess um, I've enjoyed it I don't think I've missed a Christmas party I've really enjoyed every moment I possibly could connect with staff because that staff is the people who does the work uh, you know that we need to do as council people we couldn't do it just on our own the ten of us here are nothing if we don't have a strong support staff so all the staff in the room would you just stand up for a second so I can give you some applause because you're not all here but take it back to your departments come on staff all the city staff who I'm so proud of that thank you all of you and everybody who I didn't specifically mention if you would please tell your departments how much I've enjoyed working with everybody that they all mean something to me very special uh, to the council I have to thank my fourth ward partner Carlos uh, as we talked about that constant list of phone calls emails uh, and I've enjoyed it you have been so great to work with your enthusiasm and your excitement and you're just ready to go and you it it's been a pleasure serving the fourth ward with you and I know our biggest challenge in the fourth ward has been balancing neighborhoods with growth because we're always having to have new developments and how do we balance that with the subdivisions and the neighborhoods and I think that was kind of uh, our biggest challenge but we've met that with some good results so uh, keep that up and and to everybody on the council all of you I've really enjoyed serving and thank you all for your kind words um, and I guess mayor I, I do appreciate your kind words I do have to say just 
I know in the last election you did have a sign for my opponent in your in your yard and for a sitting mayor I think that's just maybe a little bit maybe tacky even though it is freedom of speech for a sitting mayor to do that and so I would just say your actions speak louder than words to me but I do appreciate your kind words at the same time I would say we still have a lot of work to be done on the council um, the transportation focus group has a lot of momentum we've given them a lot of excuses they've had to wait for a year but I'm pleased to know that they will be on an upcoming council agenda just to form the Commission just to have a voice of suggestions so we don't get to the budget and feel like we have to scramble because this group uh, can give us some ideas uh, Lincoln University I just hope we can keep that partnership up uh, vacating Chestnut Street was something that I'm disappointed we couldn't get while I was on the council but I really have faith that this group is gonna make that happen um, I know we brought it up once it failed then we brought it up at committee after a student was hit by a car and it still didn't move out of committee and it just stumped me how that could happen but we have a new president dr. Rome at Lincoln University and I think we're gonna build those bridges I think now that he's on board and, and Carolyn Mahoney was wonderful as well but there's this new energy that hopefully we can get the council on board with Lincoln And by gosh if they want to vacate Chestnut Street can we work with them on doing that they're giving us some options let's please bring that up again not only are they a university here but they're a top employer in our uh, in our community <coughs> and it's a piece of economic development if anything else so we really need to work with them uh, downtown uh, I know I guess I caught a little bit of flack of all she talks about is downtown I heard that on the radio and thought well I'm proud that I've talked about downtown I've had a lot of people say good for you somebody needs to um, on the council and we've had some some good uh, things moving forward in downtown uh, we came with uh, the residential and the parking permit and that was difficult shouldn't have been as difficult as it was but by gosh we did it we got it we still need to form the CID uh, Stephanie Bell has been an outstanding leader in the downtown uh, and people are saying well downtown's looking good let's move on to the next thing and I'll remind you that in the 200 block alone we have a boarded up window and a prominent business which has now been taken over by new owners so that's gonna finally be uh, remedied but when you look at our 200 block and see a boarded up window and a condemned building right in our 200 block we as a council we've got to be on that we could we have to say we cannot let the downtown fall apart in that manner it looks great but there's still a lot of work to be done so I challenge councilman Schulte and Mahalovich our two downtown ward reps to really uh, make an effort to uh, further the improvements for all of us not just uh, not just whether or not I have a business downtown I think all of us all ten of us need to be concerned that is definitely uh, what we are we're the state capital um, one of my biggest disappointments is that I don't get to work with the new state administrator Steve Kroll I am so pleased with your uh, the beginning of your service you've really made an effort to reach out and start building some bridges that really need to be and I was so looking forward to finally having a city administrator who is just uh, outstanding background years of experience what you can bring to the table is just really something that we need and I was so looking forward to that so uh, welcome and I know that you'll do great things here along with this great staff and of course the conference center uh, I feel like we worked really hard all of us did and everybody has a different thing in their mind of maybe what they think it should be or where it should go or what should happen and I know I read in a recent News Tribune article that well let's go back and let's ask these voters and let's ask you know let's ask voters what they think and I just want to remind the council that we did ask voters what they thought three years ago and they passed a lodging tax with pretty specific um, uh, end result in mind they we knew what they were voting for so I just want to remind you so of the six years I'm proud that I've been open and accessible uh, I've always tried to be to everyone no matter what ward all wards uh, even when they would say my councilman won't talk to me because whatever the issue was I I really uh, didn't care about the ward boundaries because um, I tried to connect with the community tried to get the council to I appreciate their backing when it ca came to buying a brick for the animal shelter buying a brick for freedoms corner you know for us when when we kind of band together we can do good things um, so I'm proud of the six years that I've represented our ward or fourth ward uh, our place within the city the county and the state and most recently being appointed to serve on the Missouri State University Board of Governors so I've been able to 
I feel expand my um, my reach beyond just uh, our place here and bring uh, a more worldly view uh, and and I say worldly because I look at what even John Landwehr had done bringing a sister city to Jefferson City and making a trip there to Germany and you know we we have to look beyond just our street and really look at our place uh, in, our, in our community and in our world and I hope I've been able to do that and would like to continue to do that uh, I don't think I'll be resting for very long, and I do have a strong faith that there is something bigger and better. I still hope to use my uh, enthusiasm for, for Jefferson City and hopefully uh, a bigger and better way than even this seat has allowed me to do. So thank you all for um, being supportive and listening, and uh, thank you to everybody in Fourth Ward. All right, Carrie, thank you very much for your six years of service. Uh, at this point in time, as it is tradition, uh, we do what we call, uh, we adjourn uh, with signy die, and I will ask our um, junior city counselor to tell us exactly what that means for the people at home. That means to sign off for the final time. All right. This council is officially adjourned. Signy die. Uh, next, we will have administration of oath here in just a few minutes. I know there's some people that need to leave, and uh, we'll be doing that with uh, Rick Prather from the first ward, Rick Mihalovich from the second, Bob Scrivener from the uh, third ward, Glenn Castales from the fourth, and Larry Henry from the fifth. So join us for that, and then we'll be back here in just a few short minutes uh, for the first meeting of the 2014-2015 council. Thank you. We'll be right back.